Today we are working on Excel Chapter 2 Portfolio Builder. So this is what you should have opened up. EPB02 is the title of the document. Go ahead and save it where you save everything, putting your initials at the end. And in step three it says to group sheet one through three. So down here on the bottom where it's got sheet one, we'll click on that one. We'll hold down the shift key and click sheet three and you can see that there's a solid line there which now shows me that they're grouped. Step four says insert a header. So we'll go to insert header and footer. We'll put your name in the left. In the center it says to put the sheet name code in the center which is this button and then the page number code at the right page number code at the right and then change back to normal view step five with the sheet still grouped so make sure that you still have a solid line under these sheets and that they are grouped format cell A1 with the title cell style so we're going to click up here on A1 I'm going to go to the styles, click the down arrow, and select title. Step six, format range A2 through E2. A2 to E2. With the heading three, cell style. Heading three. Step seven, A4 through E4. A4 through E4, heading 3 cell style, and rotate it using the angle counterclockwise setting. So up here in our alignment group, we'll click the down arrow right here, angle counterclockwise, and you can see how it's changed those. Step 8 in cell D2, so click in cell D2. Enter the date and time using the now function. So I'm going to click on formulas. Click the down arrow on date and time. And then I'm going to scroll down to the one that says now. Click now. This box will open up this function arguments box. And it just tells you it's going to return the current date and time. And click OK. And when you do that, you can see the date and time of when you've actually done this. Step 9 says adjust the column widths as needed and then ungroup the sheets. The column widths are okay. So I'm going to right click down here and I'm going to click ungroup sheets and so now everything is ungrouped. Step 10 says rename the sheets as follows. Sheet 1 should be expenses. So right down here on sheet 1 I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to rename. I'm going to type expenses. Sheet 2 should be income. So I'm going to click on sheet 2. I'm going to right click. Click rename and type income. Sheet three is going to be summary, so I'll right click, rename, summary. So that completes step 10. Next step says on the expenses sheet, so make sure that you go back to the expenses sheet. Select cell range C5 through C13. So I'm going to highlight from C5. To C13 and it says to review the auto calculate results on the status bar. The status bar is this white bar along the bottom and over here you can see that average it gives you these selected cells it gives you the average of them how many there are and if you were to add them all up so it just wants you to review knowing that you can do that. Step 12 in cells B14 and C14 of the expenses sheet. So make sure you're still on the expenses sheet. I'm going to click in cell B14. Enter formulas using the sum function to calculate the values above and adjust column widths as needed. So clicking in cell B14 in the formulas, I'm just going to click the little auto sum button right here. And you can see that it highlights those. I'm going to hit enter and it gives you that total. And do the same thing in C14, auto sum, enter. It automatically adjusted those for me. 
Step 13, needs, we need to now be on the income sheet. And in cells B9 and C9, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add up. So in B9, auto sum, enter. And C9, auto sum, and enter. It says to adjust column width as necessary. I don't need to adjust mine. If you need to adjust yours, do that. Step 14 in cells B5 through C5 of the summary sheet. So let's go to the summary sheet. We're going to work on cell B5 first. It says to enter formulas that summarize the applic applicable data from the other two sheets. And it gives you a hint to subtract the expenses from the income. So right now we're working on the estimated. So what we're going to do first of all to have a formula, we'll type equals and we know we've started a formula so it said to subtract income from expenses I'm going to click on the income sheet right now we are working on estimated so we want the estimated total so I'm just going to click on that cell which is cell B9 I'm going to type a minus I'm going to go to the expenses sheet we're working on the estimated I'm going to click in cell B14 and I'm going to hit enter when I hit enter, it takes me back to the summary sheet. And now if I click in this cell, B5, you can see here up here is your formula equals the income on B9 minus the expenses on B14, which is the correct formula. So I need to do the same thing in the actual. So I'll click in cell C5. I'm going to type equals. Starts the formula. Go to the income. Click on the actual income total. Type minus. Go to the expenses, actual total, and hit enter. When you do that, you can see that your formula income of C9 minus expenses in C14, which is the correct amount. Step 15, it wants us to change something on the income sheet. So right now, I want you to look right here at C9. Your number is 49,900. Go to the income sheet. And we're going to change the actual ticket sales to 53500 Well, here's our ticket sales. Here's our actual. So I'm going to click in cell C5. And I'm going to type 53500 and hit enter. And you can see that it changed this income total. When I go back to the summary sheet, this went from 49900 to 53275 Step 16 tells you to review the summary sheet to see the new recalculated results. You should have 52,200 right here. You should have 53,275 right here. Step 17 says to print with your teacher's permission, which you know in my class we don't do. Step 18, save and close the file and exit Excel. And this completes Chapter 2, Portfolio Builder.